Oh, baby, we're all kinds of fired up for this one, and it's not just because of the Super Bowl. A jam-packed Monday episode of the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast is breaking down all of the NHL news from over the weekend, including the Battle of Ontario, renewed Nathan McKinnon injury update, and we're getting into waiver wire, baby. Let's have a big week. Your Locked On Fantasy Hockey, your daily podcast on fantasy hockey. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back inside the lab, everybody, to the Monday edition of the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast. Shout out to the everydayers for holding us down and making us your first listen every single day. Day. Today's episode is brought to you by Sleeper. Download the Sleeper app and use promo code Locked On NHL to get up to a hundred bucks match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. See Sleeper's terms of use for details. My oh my, Mr. Roden, we have a jam-packed episode, and of course, we're extra fired up for obvious reasons. The Battle of Ontario is renewed. I'm not going to tee up anything else other than there are obvious things to be discussed about this game. Obviously, at the end of the game in specific, we're talking about a couple of plays here, and we're going to keep this preamble very short because we are going to have a lot to talk about, including an update to McKinnon and our waiver wire targets in Monday's bets. However, Steele, are you here for this conversation of the unwritten rules in hockey now all of a sudden taking heat when I'm pretty sure this is one of those games, Steele, that are built on respect for your teammates, respect for your opponents, and maintaining a little bit of a baseline of respect overall. But that's just my initial take. What are you seeing from this game overall? Yeah, obviously there should be some sort of respect between the clubs, even in a rivalry game. But obviously it's going to be intense and feisty between these two clubs Mm -hmm. and the Toronto Maple Leafs and and Ottawa Senators. And I'm going to try to – I'm going to take – an unbiased perspective, unbiased position here from what I saw in this game, because I'm a realist. I can separate my support for the Toronto Maple Leafs as a, as an organization that I've loved for so long. And I can separate that myself from that support Mm. in order to be as unbiased as possible in this position. Unlike a few other people out there. Yeah. If I'm Morgan Riley, and I want to hear your take on this afterwards, because you know, like, I don't know what type of hockey player you were when you were growing up, but if I'm Morgan Riley, I'm doing the exact same thing in that scenario. And I wouldn't even think twice about it. Wouldn't even bat an eyelid because Ridley Greg, what Ridley, what Ridley Greg did was absolutely classless act in a rivalry game. And you know exactly what you're doing when you mm-hmm. put an exclamation mark, uh, taking a slap shot on an empty net with five seconds left. So if I'm Morgan Riley in that position, I'm doing the exact same thing. And I'm not even thinking twice about it because I know the type of person I am in that situation. And I know what a type of hockey player I was, if that were to happen, especially in a rivalry game. On the other hand, if I'm Ridley Gregg in that position, we're up four, three, five seconds left in, in a rivalry game. Mm. I'm most likely doing the exact same thing that Ridley Gregg did just to piss off the opposition. Mm. This is a rivalry game. We understand it's going to be intense. It's going to be feisty. And if an opponent came up to me and cross-checked me after I took a slap shot with five seconds left from the hash marks on an empty netter, I would completely understand yeah. what he was doing if he sure. was gonna if he was gonna do that to me because sure. I know what I'm doing out there and yep. I know what this I know the type of message I'm trying to send mm. in a rivalry game. So I see it from both sides. If I'm Morgan Riley, I'm doing the exact same thing. If I'm Ridley Gregg in a rivalry game, I'm doing that as well. So it goes both ways. But again, I'm a realist. And, and it's just such BS seeing a bunch of Sens fans and a bunch of Sens podcasters come out, come on here and talk about, oh, if this was the other way around, uh, it, you know, if this was Noah Gregor, to your example yesterday, if this was Max Domi and he came out here and did mm. that, oh, we wouldn't have said anything. We wouldn't have done anything. We wouldn't have cross-checked the guy in the in the chin. Like, don't, don't, don't sit. Don't think yeah. you're holier than thou. Don't sit on your high horse and think that you're better than everyone because you're mm. not. You are mm. not better than anyone in the NHL or any, any NHL fan base, probably one of the worst. But this is absolutely just BS from Sens fans and Sens podcasters. <laughs> I like that you're heated, Steel. I like this. I, I'm pissed off because, no. I mean, again, I'm a realist. I, mm. can, I can take my biased opinion out of this scenario and talk about what I saw from both point views. If you're going to sit up there mm. and just be as sure. biased 
biased as possible and say, oh, we would never do that to anybody. You're abs- you're an absolute goof. You're an absolute fool. And you have no idea what you're talking about. Here's number one for me. The Ottawa Senators won this game. The Ottawa Senators have clearly got something going right now when they play the Toronto Maple Leafs that they can resurrect themselves from last place in the division, only two points up on the Columbus Blue Jackets in the Eastern Conference. That's number one. Hats off to them. They won the game. They played better down the stretch. The Leafs had all the chances in the world to win that game, and they once again don't get it done, and that's on them. And the Toronto Maple Leafs have their own problem, Steele, yeah. and we've been all over them. We're not sitting here calling them a Stanley Cup winner, which a lot of these Sens fans and podcasters at the start of the year, after they got Tarasenko, I remember bets going in on the Sens to win the Cup. They were ready to plan that parade. Little bit of a reality check here, and I'll just leave it at this because I think all that really needs to be said here is what's being said by the veterans on the Senators themselves. Claude yeah. Giroux was disgusted with Ridley Gregg. And yeah, he did a really good veteran job of not blasting him or throwing a 21-year-old under the bus because let's just remember that as well. Hopefully a learning point for a young 21-year-old kid who was in the wrong. Let's be real, and I'll get to Riley in a second. But just back to Ridley Gregg and what the people out there are saying, and maybe some of these people need to check themselves on their biased fronts when people like Marty Barron on TSN, who is clearly has no side in this. He is a Buffalo Sabres francophone who really doesn't give a damn, right? And he has a take that I think is spot on. It's embarrassing. You don't do it. He agrees with you 100%. And I am the type of player to stick up for my goaltender and my team. But I think, you know, this is what I mean about Riley. I'm going after that guy with all the gusto in the world. But what I might do, and this is what I think Riley was trying to do. And when you run that tape back, and this is what I always implore people to do who tend to sit on their high horse, just run the tape back. He went to give him a hard shot right in the top of the shoulder, right in the edge. And Greg puts his arm up and the stick rides up into his neck. So run the tape back because he's not a dirty player. Also, Morgan Riley is in the mix by many experts out there to be a Team Canada Olympic defenseman. This is not a dirty player. I don't think it's a suspendable play either, Steele, to bring this full circle. I'll get your take on that. I'm going to say a fine. Maybe one game. He's no got no track record. He's not a dirty player. And in my opinion, all those hockey players sitting up there on the Department of Player Safety know that kind of situation in a heated game. I understand what Ridley Gregg did, but it was a mistake. It's dirty pool. And just remember where you're at, kid. You're a 21-year-old third liner who has nothing to prove for himself in this. And have everything to prove still for himself. And your team is in last place. So maybe just check yourself a little bit. Yeah, I've got a lot more to say on this topic. I'll I'll finish up before, uh, you know, we'll come back after break yeah. and talk a lot more b- about it, but I'll finish up with this before we get to our sponsor, Reed. Uh, just going back to your point about Claude Giroux and some of these other, um, you know, Ottawa Senator at ex-NHL players for the for the Senators organization. Mm-hmm. Like like you said, like Claude Giroux in that post-game interview couldn't yeah. even defend or support Ridley Gregg. He, no. he did the most veteran response uh, – the most professional response that you classy. could probably come up with. It was yeah. classy from Claude Giroux, but you couldn't, Claude defend, Giroux. you couldn't defend, you couldn't support Ridley Gregg for what he did. And I'm yeah. telling you, if Claude, Claude uh, Giroux was on the other side of that, he probably would have done the same thing to Greg if he was on the opponent's team. And even, even on Twitter, like Mark Mathot is a regular on the Locked On Senators podcast. And even he came out on Twitter and he said that he loved what Ridley Gregg did. But he also loved what Morgan Riley did too. Like mm. it goes both ways. So again, sure. like if you're gonna sit up here and think that you're holier than thou, like you're just not. You're you're fooling mm. yourself. You're fooling everybody out there. And you've yeah. clearly never played competitive hockey in your life because if you're in that incident, I don't care. Like besides playing house league where there's not even supposed to be contact, if you're playing competitive hockey and another mm. team does that to you, a team that you really really hate. You're going over there and you're saying something, regardless whether you hit him in the head, if you hit him in the shoulder, you give him a cross check to the ribs. It doesn't mm-hmm. matter. It's going to hurt regardless. And yeah. like you said, even the point of contact, it started on the shoulder. It rode up into his chin. Yeah. And I'll finish off with this before we continue this conversation. Timmy Stutzla's performance of diving has been a huge part of this for the or- Ottawa Senators organization. It's really rubbing off on the other guys on the team right now. Mm. I don't even know how many times Tim Stutzla has dived so far in this season, but it's got to be over 50. There's a lot of soft play going on on both sides of the puck right now, Steele, in the province of Ontario. But let's just – I'll finish it at this, and it's not even a point. It's just a fact. I never want to see a player get hurt. And Ridley Gregg was smiling after the play. So it's not like like Morgan Riley jumped him from behind and did the Donald Brashear spa or the Todd Bertruzzi spash and smashed his face into the ice. 
it was a retaliatory play. Maybe he should have gone right in the back of the leg where there's no padding with the stick and then dropped the gloves or something. And we could nitpick that. But the fact remains that it was dirty pool. And on Morgan Riley's side, was it a heated response? Yeah, but I don't think it was dirty pool on that side. So let's talk about it on the other side of the break a little bit more quickly. There's some fantasy takes also to be had right around the break. Waiver wire, Nathan McKinnon, Monday's bets. Today's episode is brought to you by Sleeper. It's almost the halfway point in the season and all of your favorite squads are on the up and down. But regardless of where you are in the standings, you need to know you could win big by playing daily fantasy hockey on Sleeper, the official daily fantasy app of the Locked On NHL Network. Sleeper is our number one choice for daily fantasy sports, especially daily fantasy hockey, because with Sleeper, you can win 100 times your cash in daily fantasy hockey contests. You know what you need to be doing. You just got to pick whether studs like McDavid, Ovi, Crosby, or McKinnon will We'll record more or less than the sleeper projections for things like goals, assists, saves, plus minus in any given game. Use promo code locked on NHL and you'll get up to a hundred bucks match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. That's code locked on NHL. See sleepers terms of use for details and locational availability. And thank you so much for making the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast your first listen every single day. Continue to hit the subscribe button, the follow button. Make sure you go to YouTube as well. Check out Locked On Sports today, the first ever 24-7 national sports streaming channel has been up for over two months now, doing incredible things over there. They've got you covered for any sports topic that you want to talk that you want to check in on 24-7 from local experts of Locked On, plus the national shows covering every single league. So make sure you go over there, subscribe, check out the channel because they're doing great things. Mm -hmm. Continuing on the conversation, though, of Morgan Riley, Ridley Gregg, and this, you know, matchup between the Senators and Maple Leafs. And I want to answer your question about whether I think this is a a suspendable act. And Mm -hmm. I think it is. I think it is a suspendable act because it it is still targeting of the head. And he went in there with intent to hit him in the head. Mm. So I think it is suspendable. But however, like you said, this was a classless act from Ridley Gregg. And if you think that you can just, if you think your opponent's not going to come over and do something and you're not ready to, you know, throw down, like, again, Ridley Gregg is an absolute goofball if he thinks nobody's going to respond. You, mm. you acted a certain way. You got a reaction. You had the right to do that. But Morgan R- Riley also had the right to come over and respond however uh, he seemed fit. So I'll say this, mm. uh, if I, again, I think it is a suspendable uh, offense, but I'm honestly fine if he were to get suspended because this is something the Leafs needed right now, a little bit more grit and passion. I don't care what kind of form it comes into. And I've got, for, I think it's uh, I, I'm fine with the suspension for multiple reasons. Number one, the NHL's player safety <laughs> department has been an absolute joke recently. Well, Brendan yeah, Gallagher, forever. Brendan Dillon, and Nikita Zadorov have been the most recent suspended players. And mm-hmm. even those hits were more vicious than what Morgan Riley did. Number two, okay. if Morgan Riley doesn't do anything in this situation, the narrative that has been happening all season and for many years now is that the Toronto Maple Leafs continue to be the softest team in the league. Where's oh, the yeah. passion? They're a soft mm-hmm. team. It's been if pretty accurate. Yeah, if he doesn't do anything, then they're still soft. But now that he's done something, he's just a crybaby, still soft, and he overreacted. Number well, three, mm. again, like I said before, it's exactly what I would have done in both situations. And there's people out there, again, who can sit on their high horse and think they're better than everyone else, and I'm sure they're fine with that. But Senators fans might be the biggest hypocrites I've ever had the displeasure of listening to in my entire life. They don't know what they're talking about because they've never played competitive hockey and again, like I see it from both sides. If I was really Greg, I'm doing yeah. the same thing. If sure. I'm Morgan Riley, I'm doing the same thing in that situation. And yeah. I'm a realist, but the you know other people just aren't. I I'm not actually here on the side of. I don't think it was intent to injure. Yeah, he went over there to give him a rub. But I'm just gonna say this: everything that you're saying, I think, actually lines up to support Morgan Riley not being suspended. Is it going to be one game at max? That's what I would put it at. I think it's just going to be a fine given everything that we just brought up, including his track record, the heated game and everything else suspendable. I would have to look at it a lot more because also the people that I'm reading and watching on TV and the guys who are the real experts, former players, if you're not going to trust the podcasters, trust the people that have played the game at that high of a level. And most of them are saying no suspension. So I understand the heat of the moment. Hey, 
Fan bases get out of control. That's why they're called fans. But when you come on here and you're trying to break it down from a journalistic side of things, and you and I have to cover all 32 teams, we don't have the luxury of just sitting here and being homers for one squad. You got to look at it objectively. And I think that's what I'm trying to do here. Could I see him suspended? For sure. Would I think it would be off the mark for him to get one or two games? No, I don't. I don't think it happens, though, Steele. That's just where I'm at. I don't know if you want to close up on this and we'll move on. Where are you at? Yeah, you know, that's pretty much for me on the whole scenario. Again, like I, I see it from both points of views. I see it from both perspectives. And again, I would have done the exact same thing. Yeah, in let's both leave situations. it at that. But as Ridley Gregg, like you got to expect some retaliation and like, don't don't just take a dive. Don't think. And the thing was, he got up right afterwards, too, and didn't even go and try to go after Morgan Riley. Like he knew yeah. what he was doing. He knew yeah. what he was trying to send to the Maple Leafs and their fan base. And I'll leave it at that. So yeah, there you go. It is what like it is it. at this point. I you know, we'll see what happens with suspension to Morgan Riley if it is to happen. But uh, again, just a, just a classless mm -hmm. fan base from the Ottawa Senators. Hey, I'm going to agree with you there, Steele. Look, it's the it's the Canada Ontario Senators. That's OK. Look, this is what we do, baby. The fan bases go back and forth. We're going to hear it all before. No cups, first round playoff exits. Bop, bop, bop. We've heard it. The Leafs have a shot this year. I mean, Ottawa's cooked. 28. I mean, 28. Ottawa's place cooked. Team, it's just, it, they're just brutal. So it's like th the thing is, is if Ottawa's in first place and then the fan base goes off and the Leafs are in last place, it's like, come on, Ridley Gregg, you're 21 years old. So I defend him on that side. But just also remember, look at Claude Giroux's face. That's all you need to know right there. And all I hear yeah. from Sens fans all the time is Claude Giroux this. He's the king. He's the gem. He's the stud. I agree, actually, with all of that. Then let's agree with him here. Ridley Gregg was, it was a mistake. We've talked about it. Let's just talk very quickly about Nathan McKinnon. This Colorado Avalanche team steal in a little bit of trouble here. And, of course, they are a quality squad who is going to be sniffing around for that Stanley Cup. But this little play from McKinnon, I don't know if you saw it, a 4 nothing loss against, was it the Panthers? I think it was Florida. No, Cap, uh, I'm all over the map. Anyway, they lost. They lose again. Gorgiev's looking gassed. They're sniffing around for goaltenders. They're calling up a rookie. He's probably going to get a look this week. It was a Provetsov not playing very well. So Nathan McKinnon, he, I don't know if you saw the play. He got banged into the net a little bit, got caught, and he fell right on his face. He left the game and did not return. Could be a jaw, could be a chin. It might not be anything at all. But when Nathan McKinnon and his quality this season steal, as I think you and I can agree on this one, the best fantasy piece and the best player in the NHL this year so yeah. far. Okay, Kucherov, Connor McDavid, why not? But 85 points in 53 games, including that point streak. You got to talk about Nathan McKinnon when he leaves a game and doesn't return. It's just a fact. Yeah, you know, I, I, I haven't quite taken a look at the play just yet. I'm going to have to search up the video after we hop off this podcast or the, uh, for this episode. But I did hear yep. about it. I, I, I believe it was uh, his chin, but you yep. know, chin, jaw, it's all in the same yep. area pretty much. And, yeah, it was the Panthers. Yeah, they the lost four nothing. He got caught up behind the net and he literally face planted on the ice. Yeah, I'm definitely going to have to check out the video, but I'm hoping it's not as severe as, you know, uh, you know, obviously, I don't want to. It's not the same thing. Connor Bedard br broke his jaw, but you yeah, know, yeah, he's yeah. been out for a while now. I don't mm -hmm. think he'll be out for for that for that long. But uh, you know, maybe missing the next couple of games to see where he's at could be in play. But to your point about Alexander Gorgiev, I mentioned this earlier in the season. Mm -hmm. Like this is this is exactly what the Dallas Stars sort of did with Jake Ottinger last and Winnipeg year. Over with Hellebuck and Winnipeg, and they they yep. overplayed their goaltenders come playoff time. Yep. And they just weren't they were able gassed. to really battle, and they were gassed. So mm -hmm. this has been mm -hmm. the ongoing uh, motion with the Colorado Avalanche this season is they've been riding Alexander Gorgiev. They don't have yep. a backup goaltender to really come in and take over for a game, so they've been playing him. Uh, what well, I believe he leads the NHL in yeah, games he does. played. So yes, he does. And that's why he has a lot of wins because he's playing for the Colorado Avalanche and he just hasn't been up to par from what we saw last year. So th this is something that's going to be very interesting over the next, you know, three weeks, mm -hmm. four weeks when it comes to trade deadline. Cause yeah. Colorado is definitely going to have to make a move for a backup goaltender. Yes. Four five and one in their last 10, of course, sitting right there, two points back at Dallas in the central. They're very much alive, but there are some issues. There are a lot of teams here, Steele. Kind of getting their hiccups out early, perhaps. Jets struggling a little bit. Colorado struggling. We both think they're both going to be there. However, if 
Nathan McKinnon even miss one or two games. You're going to have to hit the waiver wire steal, and that's what we're going to do right after the break. We'll keep it tight. We got Monday's bets. I need to be a lot better, Steel. You're kicking, cooking with gas. Let's have at it. Big, big week coming up for both of us. Big week starting Monday. We got waiver wire targets and big time bets. But first, this episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Get buckets with your first bet on FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 if your bet wins. Bet on all your favorite NBA players and teams with quick bets. Of course, the fan favorite, same game parlays, exclusive player props, and more betting options. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and shoot your shot. Again, visit FanDuel.com slash locked on. Shoot your shot with FanDuel, the official sports book of mm-hmm. the NBA. And thank you so much for making the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast your first listen every single day. Continue to hit the subscribe, the follow button, and leave a five-star review. We appreciate all that love and support you show us. Monday through Friday, 7 o'clock in the morning is when you can find our episodes. Waiver wire targets up with finishing off with big-time bets. Mm -hmm. Flip, if you don't mind, uh, I'll sort of just kind of fly through my three targets for this upcoming week. I haven't... Uh, I haven't actually checked the weekly schedule, so I don't, I don't know how many times these, uh, these players are playing this week. But I've got three players that I really like heading into week 18 mm. of Fantasy Hockey League matchups. Mm. Starting your... off with Kyle Palmieri of the New York Islanders Ooh. right now. He is Deep absolutely cut. firing. Deep cut. Yeah, he's absolutely firing on all cylinders. He's got seven points in his last seven games. He's getting shots up there. He's getting hits and, and blocks as well. He's up to 31 points in 52 games. He's playing on that second line with Brock Nelson and Pierre Engvall, uh, yeah. which has actually been a pretty solid second line. I would like to see them maybe add somebody to the top six group come uh, come the trade deadline. We've heard that before, haven't we? Reg- regardless of that, Kyle Palmieri is doing really well right now. Seven points in his last seven games. Sure. I'm just trying to get up his stats. He's got three winning uh, – three game winning goals he's got 133 shots on that 52 hits 29 blocks a few penalty pel- minutes here and there but he's just feeling his game right now so i like kyle palmary nice week to week flyer the- i like yeah it. nice week to week flyer and he's hot right now so you got to pick him up when he's hot another uh fantasy hockey player that i'm really liking right now is jonathan quick of the new york rangers yes, sir. He's been play- playing really spectacular three straight wins uh, in his four last starts, he's not allowed more than two goals in four straight games. His save percentage is way up right now. Mm-hmm. He's been playing some real great hockey. And this is exactly what I said in the preseason about feeling real comfortable now that with with Jonathan Quick being the backup goaltender. Because before yeah. with Halak, just no confidence every time he was in the blue paint. Jonathan Quick comes in. They still have that confidence when he's in the cage. And this is a goaltender. Again, knock on wood because I don't want this to happen. But God forbid Shesterkin goes down in the playoffs. Jonathan Quick is a goaltender you want to have come back up and, and replace him in that scenario. So 12, yeah. 4, and 2 on the season. He's got a 919 save percentage and a 2.27 goals against average. And finally, before I give it over to you, sorry, Flip. For sure. Oh, it's all good, brother. Ramble here. I got you. Ivan Barbashev. Got to talk about Barbie over here Barbie. on the Vegas Golden Knights. Mm-hmm. 31 points in 52 games. He's got. Let's see here. One, two, five. He's got seven points in his last seven games. He's, he's been playing hot. on that. He's been playing on that top line with uh, Jonathan Marcheseau and Nicholas Roy as well. Mm, so one of the best lines line, going lately. One of the best lines. You know, they don't have Jack Eichel. They don't have. Uh, they, yeah, they don't have Jack Eichel on that top line. Obviously, he's mm-hmm. still injured. But Barbashev's been really good of late as well. So Kyle Palmieri, Jonathan Quick, and Ivan Barbashev. Love them all, especially John Quick. Igor Shosturkin has an eight ninety nine save percentage, and he has been bad. If not for John Quick, this New York Rangers situation, I think, is a lot different. And I think it also speaks volumes to how good that back end is in New York because Shesterkin still has a 2012 and one record. And there are going to be, you know, shout out to Michael Amato, who will be on the show hopefully later this week, made a really good point in his column today that if not for John Quick, like I just said, the Rangers will be looking at this a lot differently. And not only has Shesterkin struggled, but they've struggled in spite of overall. I think the team has been pretty up and down steel. So I think they're really lucky to have, look, this is his other point. 
they probably passed on a lot of good skaters to take Shesterkin pretty high in your fantasy drafts. And that's another one of those things that, yeah, 2012 and one, you're getting the wins, but you're not getting many things else. The categories, he's got zero shutouts. John Quick was on my list steal. They also play the Flames Islanders and Habs this week. Not too bad. He's not getting bad starts. Honorable mention right now under a new coach with a bit of life. I don't know if he'd be an ad this week. However, the Kings play Sabres, Devils, Bruins, and Pens. Pierre-Luc Dubois has looked a little bit better in the last couple of games. He's buried in that lineup. But I'm telling you, Steele, if I have an opening pop up in one of my lineups, I'm going to take a risk on this Kings team that now with a new coach, I think are going to turn it around. He's looked pretty good. He's getting second power play time. That's my second target. Number three on the list, Andre Kuzmenko. I watched a little bit of the Calgary yeah. game over the weekend. He's playing alongside Jonathan Huberto and Igor Sharangovich, and I'm liking that line's chemistry. They play three games this week, Rangers, Sharks, and Red Wings, so I'm kind of liking that lineup. 63% on ESPN. He's high on fan track, 72, but he's out there on Yahoo, only 50% roughly. And lastly, Mason Marchman is on a heater. He's oh got points. God, he's so good. He's right got now. points, I think, in seven straight games or something yeah. like that. He's playing on a really good second line that's balanced with Tyler Sagan and Matty Duchesne. I believe those two are also on the second power play unit alongside Marchman. They got the Preds, Canes, and Oilers this week, so a bit of a tough one, but he's out there. 17% in ESPN, 33 on Yahoo, and Mason Marchman is a good player on a good team. I love that angle. And one last honorable mention, it's Brock Faber. I don't know how he's still out there in so many leagues. Brock Faber at this point is got to be my favorite for the Norris. Let's see what Bedard does when he comes back. That might be another conversation we have, Steele. But shout out to Brock Faber because in a lot of leagues he's owned, but he needs a little bit of love because he is one of the best young defensemen in the game. Faux show. Brock Faber, Brock, uh, just to be clear, Brock, Brock Faber for the Norris or the Calder? My bad. Calder. Did I say okay. Norris? Yeah, you said Norris. My bad. I was like, whoa. What about, what about whoa, whoa. Whoa, whoa, okay, whoa. Okay, and yeah, Bedard's hot here. for that Norris. No, for the Calder. <laughs> anyway, my bad. You know what it, what it is. Brock Faber, really good player. And the, the Wild have struggled this year, too. They have struggled, but he's been one of those uh, those one of those small bright lights uh, for the Minnesota True. Wild. They're still not out of it. There's a long way to go for them if they want to make the postseason, but they're not quite out. But the, again, it's going to be a long road ahead. They need to uh, consistently get wins under the belt. Let's mm -hmm. get over to big time bets. We'll make this as quick as Pop possible. It off, I've got three bets, two two over unders here in this in uh, on Monday night. First one, mm -hmm. Flames Rangers that you were just talking about. I'm taking the under six and a half in this Love matchup. It. I know Igor Shostorkin hasn't been the greatest, but if Jonathan Quick goes into this matchup, I'm feeling a little bit better as well as Jacob yeah. Markstrom has been spectacular yes. over the last stretch for the Calgary Flames. So yes. I'm taking under six and a half. Seven of the last 10 between these two teams have gone under the number. That's my yep. first pick. Second pick, Golden Knights Wild, mm. under six and a half as well. Oh. Seven of the last 10 have also gone under the number. I love Phil Gustafson's play recently. We all know how I feel sure. about Aiden Hill. I think he's one of the best fantasy goaltenders, best NHL goaltenders you. out there in the Thank market you. right now because he's been he's absolutely he's feeling wonderful. It. He's feeling himself. He, again, coming back from injury as well, and he's still playing this good. Mm. Absolutely love it from Aiden Hill. So take the under six and a half in both of those first two matchups. And finally, lock of the night, Flyers money line versus the Arizona Coyotes. Flyers have won seven out of the last 10. I love this trend with all three of my picks because all of them have been seven of the last 10. And so that's my final pick with the lock of the night. Love it. Loving that steal because also six of those seven wins for Philadelphia against Arizona have been by two or more goals. So hit me with the Flyers on the puck line because they are playing good hockey once again and winning games how they were at the start of the season. Stingy defensive play, good penalty killing, and embodying John Tortorella's hard nose approach. 2-1 win against Florida. 4-1 win against Winnipeg and 3-2 against Seattle as their last three victories, beating good teams and neat and tidy fashion. So I'm loving the angle here. Also, ream off a couple of bad Zona stats. 0-6 in their last six games on the road and only one win in their last five trips to Philly. They're also lost five straight. So give me Philly heavy puck line. I hope I didn't just talk myself into a big spot where we get burned steel. Anyway, I'm looking at this Rangers-Flames game as well. I was going to go to the under, but I'm liking the angle here for the Flames, who are playing really good hockey. 6-3-1 yeah. and one also in their last 10 against the Rangers. 
And they are six and two actually in the last ten, eight straight up, and they're playing great hockey on the road. Five wins in a row, baby. So I'm riding with the Flames on the money line in my lock of the night. You're not going to like this one so much, Steel, I don't think. But Vegas has wins seven of their last nine against Minnesota. They play great at home. They're cooking once again. All of these are the same kind of angle. They also just came off a nice 3 1 victory against the Oilers a couple of nights ago. I'm going with. Knights on the money line minus 170 it's a heavy favorite but that's why it's my lock of the night hey that's why I went with the under in this matchup because I know the Golden Knights are feeling themselves they've got I might have to put all those picks together still might have to put all of them but I'm taking the under I I would even be going with you as well uh uh, with the uh, Vegas Golden Knights money line against the Minnesota Wild um definitely gonna be a tight game with some spectacular goaltending from Philip Gustafson uh and Aiden Hill in the crease those are the picks those are the locks of the night for Monday night Thank you so much for making the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast your first listen every single day. Again, make sure you go over to YouTube. Check out the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel. They are here for you 24-7 covering any sports topics that you could think of with the local experts of Locked On, plus the national shows covering every single league. So make sure you go over there, show your support, and subscribe to the channel. Subscribe to this one. Thank you so much for making the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast, your first listen. Thank you for tuning in for today's episode with Flip and I. Have a great day. Good luck with your bets out there, and we shall see you back here again tomorrow. Peace.